Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I want to talk to you about the day that Jesus Christ was uh, tried, convicted, and sentenced to death. So uh, it says, uh, Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus, again called out to the crowd, which was uh, the Jews that were there. And it says, they shouted, saying, crucify him, crucify him. Then he said to them the third time, why, what evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of these men and of the chief priests prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. And he released to them the one they requested, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into prison. But he delivered Jesus to their will. Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, and women also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore, and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will they be done in the dry? And there were two, also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he's the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. What had happened was the religious leaders just detested all the attention and the crowds that were following Jesus Christ as he was performing miracles, as he was helping people who needed help, as he was feeding the large crowds who were hungry, and as Jesus Christ uh, was teaching them. And the many, many people, thousands of people would come to hear Jesus Christ teach. And they saw that he was teaching as one who had authority, not as the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing. And so they wanted Jesus Christ to be crucified, to be put to death, so they wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. One thing that has always struck me is that the religious leaders who were so offended by Jesus Christ were the ones who knew what the scriptures say, but they ignored all the scriptures related to the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And when he came, he fulfilled all of the scriptures. That's what they should have been looking for. Is he truly who he says he is? Is he truly the Messiah? If he is, they should have been worshiping him. Instead, they made decisions based upon their own personal preferences, their own personal benefit. And I think today we're in a situation where we have political leaders who do the same thing. They make decisions not based upon what God says, but based upon what will benefit them and uh, make them look better. And so they tend to raise their voices and try to make one another look worse, look bad, so that they hopefully look better. It's all a complete waste and tragic. But anyway, with Jesus Christ, they, the crowd was crying out. And even though Pontius Pilate realized that Jesus Christ was innocent, he was willing to listen to the crowd. That's like listening to a poll of people and making a decision based upon what's popular rather than what's true or what's the right thing to do. I want to just warn you that during this season, as we're thinking about all the candidates and the future of our nation, 
that we have people making decisions which are not based upon what is true and what is right, but instead on what is popular, who's the loudest, who puts down the other person the most. I think this is not a good way to make decisions. Anyway, God bless you. Come back next week.